this is it. We've got a good treat for you today. Mr. Paul Schaefer, he's an expert, has the largest collection of Indian, or Oklahoma Indian gaming there is. He, I think he's been to every casino in Oklahoma. Might be something that you don't collect, but believe me, you'll find this very interesting because he knows what he's talking about. So, without further ado, thank you, Paul. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. Welcome. All right, so if, if you have dinner plans tonight, Please keep call ahead because this may take a while. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma, Oklahoma, there's probably 150 to almost 200 casinos. Uh, not all of them have chips, not all of them have tables. Some have tables, some have tables for a couple months. So as we're going through, going through the slides, I'll kind of point out my favorites. I'll point out some of the ones that are hard to find. And uh, um, just go from there. Uh, first thing we kind of have to go over, we kind of go over the history of Oklahoma games. You have to understand. Uh, why are there gaming in Oklahoma? And the first one that really paved the way for Indian casino gaming is when the Florida Seminoles opened uh, High State Pingos in Florida. And with the Supreme Court, they ruled it was legal. All right, so that's kind of where Indian gaming that we know today started. Uh, then the California bands got into it. They also, that was a really big one. 1987, you'll see casinos like in Minnesota where I grew up opening up all over the place. But what was weird or odd, what I found out when I was researching this is, why did it take Oklahoma so long? And it was just because of the state legislature trying to they kind of just slow roll. They did have big old halls, and you'll see that reflected in the chips, the name of the casinos. A lot of them in the early years started with bingo or gaming or something, because that's what they were. They were bingo halls. They weren't, they didn't have blackjack, they didn't have crafts or the roulette that they have today. Right, so they've come a long way in a short period when you compare it to uh, Nevada uh, gaming. Uh, another thing you have to understand is why is gaming so different in Oklahoma? There's three different classes of gaming. Uh, class one, which is your traditional uh, uh, gaming, uh, traditional travel gaming, an example is stickball. That didn't need any regulation. They've been doing that for hundreds of years. All right. Class two, that's where your bingo pull tabs uh, and non-banked games. So non-banked games is what I classify as blackjack, um, something where the house takes the winnings. All right, so bingo wasn't considered a bank game because you were playing against everybody else. You weren't playing against the house, and that's what banked games were. And then again, in 2004, when they passed the legislation, that's when they allowed banked games, which is that's where you're going to see an explosion in casinos, blackjack tables, uh, chips across the board. Here's some fun facts about Oklahoma. And yeah, since 1983, I've, I've found over 143 casinos that have opened across Oklahoma. There's more. Those, I think, are the ones mostly with chips. Uh, there are every gas station, I think, next to a big casino, they call them casinos, is a term that we actually use in the chip guide nowadays. Because of Oklahoma, they, every tribe has a different uh, they have gas stations all over the place that will have, just kind of like you do in downtown with Terribles in Las Vegas. They'll have little slot five, ten slot machines in there. Um, 87 have chips over the years. They've changed names multiple times. Depends on how big the chip or how big the casinos have gotten. They actually outgrow each other or they merge. And then one thing I found interesting, in, in Oklahoma, three of the top ten largest casinos are in the state of Oklahoma with Windstar being the number one, um, and seven and eight being Riverwind, which is in Tulsa, and Choctaw Durant, which is down by, uh, also down by Texas. And a funny story, my friend uh, tells me about Windstar. If you go there on a Friday or Saturday night, it will be constant paging of people because they can't find each other because the casino was so big. All you see is, will Bob come here, Cindy go here, because that's all the announcements are all night. All right, when you first came in, you all got a tribal magazine or a tribal map. Uh, this kind of explains why casinos are where they are. All right, when you first look at why there's a casino here, you have to understand why are they not all around Tulsa, why are they not around Oklahoma, and why are they along the border. And this explains why it's because each uh, tribal, uh, Indian tribal community had their own jurisdiction. And this is where they could actually put their casinos on the property. 
right? The old county south county up here real quick. This is the Oklahoma City area. This up here is the Tulsa area. And you'll see that in, within the Tulsa area, you have three major tribes that have the ability to put ships <coughs> within the city limits or pretty close to it. So there's a lot of competition between three tribes up in Tulsa. Yeah. Oklahoma City is the same way. Um, you've got multiple Seminole, uh, Ch Chickasaw, and then further out, the Arapaho. And, uh, As we go through um, the casinos, I'll give you the tribe that they're in so you can kind of focus in on where we are on the map, and then you see where, they're, where they are. All right, these are the casinos that opened up from 1983 1994. These are gonna be a lot of your bingo halls. All right, so we haven't got to real game, like the class three gaming in Oklahoma yet. So what you see when they, see that one, when, when they open, um, your bingo halls or pool tabs or other things like that. Things like that. Um, the green star is that they're open. The yellow star is they had tables at one time, but they removed them. And if it's a red star, is they changed names or they've closed all together. So as these start to come up, you'll see where they are on the map and whether they're still open or they're closed or if they still even have table games. Right? This just automatically runs, so I'll just let you guys watch. And you start to see a lot of them red. And again, this star right here, the big dot, that's Oklahoma City, right? This will be Oklahoma City. This will be Tulsa up here as you watch the map. And they were in 1990 now. And again, they're covering the Texas. A lot of us are out along the Texas border because they're trying to draw that Dallas uh, community in. Still more down there. Last one with Coca Cola. All right, this, this next map is from 95 to 96. We're only a short year. So you're really starting to see the expansion as they are getting their foothold, as they're bringing in more bingo parlors, or as they call gaming centers. And gaming centers are allowed to have uh, class two slot machines. Um, class two, which you looked at was bingo, but the class two is it's, the slot machines are like bingo. When you play it, you push the button, you're like competing against everybody, and if you get a good card, you win. They call them red, red, with red, the red machines or something like that, so they'll blink red when they start going. And if you're in Oklahoma, and you're in one of these casinos on a Friday or Saturday night, you'll know it's the red machines because um, they're mostly dollar machines to play. And if they win $10 or more, it rings a bell. And when you've got hundreds of these machines and people who are playing them, all you hear is bells ringing the whole night, so. All right, more expansion in the middle of the state through those years, you see that Oklahoma City, the Seminole Tribe really opened up a lot of them at that point, right outside of uh, Oklahoma City. And there's one more up north by the Miami area. And the Miami area, when I reference it, is going to be up in the northeast corner up here. And there's a bigger blow up on your map. And you'll see all the different tribes that are up there. So you'll understand why there's so many casinos up in the northeast corner uh, of the state. All right. This takes you from 1998 to 2002. We're not quite there to um, full gaming yet, but we're, the legislation's getting work. There's talk about it. There's a lot of push in the state to get class three in there, to open up to uh, casinos. And that up north, where that red star at the very top just showed up, if you keep going north, that gets you up to Kansas, which, which top, Kansas, another big market that they're trying to I uh, get to. Again, we're, we're along the Arkansas. There's no gaming in Arkansas at this time. Uh, none of the casinos were open, so there's a lot of interest to put casinos close to Arkansas. Again, still saturating more of the uh, Miami area is opening up even more, and then around the Oklahoma City, still more casinos are coming.
Grand Lake? Yeah. All right, these are 2003 to 2006. Got a couple more slides. Stay with me. Yeah. There's Windstar. Windstar finally opens up in 2003 and it keeps expanding and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Which one is Windstar? The Windstar is the green one down at the bottom. Texas border. Down oh, okay. Texas border. Thank you. Yeah. And another interesting thing you'll see on these maps, uh, a lot of the tribes have combined or consolidated their table games. So you might have like uh, a Cherokee casino, but there's only one Cherokee, Cherokee casino that has tables, and that's the Hard Rock in Tulsa. And the same thing up north and northeast, you got Quakpaw Casino and then Downstream. Well, they built a big mega downstream casino and they put all the tables there. They no longer needed them at these little tiny casinos anymore. It helps them save money and also consolidates and builds up their uh, customer base. Two more to go. Uh, this is 2007. Now we are in full force. We're tables. We're class three gaming. We are everybody opening up, putting in. There's the downstream I just talked about. Open up in 2008. And actually, Quaqua Casino, I was there the week that they closed the table games. I stopped there, my trip down there, and they were like, yep, this is the last weekend we're having table games. Because they removed them the very next week and all the chips were gone. Because at that time, downstream was up and running. And there was no reason to have them. They were only like 10 minutes apart. I mean, they're really next, close to each other, next to each other. Stone Wolf has just popped up, and Stone Wolf is right up in here. That yellow one, right, sorry, right here, started as a slots only and then moved to have table games for six months and then removed the tables. So unless you were there that six months, we never got, we never got the chips. Luckily, I was able to get there with people they were moving. So, all right, one more, I believe. All right, still adding more, more and more are coming in. Blackhawk is another situation though. Opened up again, had table games when they first opened. Within a year, the tables were gone. Chips were gone, you couldn't get them anymore. Uh, Tonkawa West um, replaced Tonkawa East. They took the tables out of East, because the West is on the interstate. So it made more sense to have the table games over there. Brand new casino. And then we have our, our last one that we our board built, which is Golden Mesa. All the way up there, and we're still, if you look at your jurisdiction map, there is no tribe located for that one, so we're not sure <laughs> how they got authorization to put a casino out there. And it is literally, it's like Boot Hill, Kansas. Uh, the Boot Hill Casino in Kansas is out in the middle of literally nowhere. So, all right, I'm just gonna run this. This will run the whole time. And this kind of just will show you on a whole scale of all the casinos that have been built and whether they still have chips or not. Green, obviously, they still have chips closed or renamed throughout the state. Paul, the other one runs the one up in Ghana. Do you know which one I'm trying to Yeah, we'll get to it. I have all that. Okay. When we get to it, you'll see it. I have them all. That's the next after. That was a pretty good idea how they were able to do that. Okay. So throughout the years, these are all the casinos that have come up with chips. This is just with chips. This is not casinos, little tiny casinos or slots only. This is all with just chips throughout the years. Alright. And then this next one, this will show you a current map. If you decide that you would like to drive to Oklahoma and get all the chips you want for your collection, this is how you would have to do it. These are all the ones and how far you have to drive. I was, it takes about three days. Yeah. To cover the entire state. What's on over in the pineapple? Is that that's, Diamond? That's gold, Golden Beast. Yeah, that's yeah. Like a Diamond. Diamond, yeah. All right, so normally what we do is we come down from Miami, we head all the way down, walk, come across the border, double back, hit the Oklahoma City, we go up north, and that's kind of, it's a zigzag, and, it's, and then you're dodging tornadoes and ball storms and, and everything else as you're driving around. Everything, every one of those things I've said, so this happened.
All right. Again, here's just a quick overlay of some of the chips you'll find. We're going to go through them. I've got every chip, not every chip. I did not put any roulettes, no cash values, uh, nothing like that. And these are strictly table chips. These are the chips you would have found on the tables if you stopped at the casino. And another thing I've done is I've combined the chips by when they were issued and then uh, if they have been changed names or if they merged, so you can kind of see how the chips over the years have changed from each casino to each casino. All right. So we'll start with the Thunderbird, Shawnee and South by Oklahoma City. And you see, you can tell by the molds how old they are. So you know it's one of the earlier casinos. And then if you see where like here I got the 50 centers, that's the current center on the table. How did you get the 25? When did you start? Because I know the Thunderbird. Well, there's a Thunderbird in Tecumseh, right outside of Norman. Right. That they were pushing the limits of the legislature's tolerance. And they had table games when they weren't supposed to. Right. And they had chips. Mm -hmm. well, unfortunately, I was too young to get in. Right. Strapping back and forth going to school. And they finally, the state right. threatened them and they quit. Right, and they immediately brought back. So it's, that's not the only casino. Yeah. That's why a lot of these older ones were, a lot of the chips were pre the 2004, yeah. everything being legal. And when we get to uh, um, Seneca, border, border casino, mm -hmm. border town up in Seneca, I'll show you a chip up there that's interesting of what they were doing. Okay. Um, I got these out of collection. I bought a couple collections and I have their names of, the, of who I bought. Uh, but since then, I've built on what they started and continue to grow it as I go. All right, so there's Thunderbird. First edition, that's what you would have found first, and then the, what you probably find on the front now. It's the new 50 Center. That's the old, the blue one is the old one. Okay, here's the Apache Tribe of Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. This is also really old, like one of the very first ones. Uh, again, you can tell by the molds, hot stamps. I couldn't read, I can still not find any information on it. I keep searching and searching, but I just know based on a lot of the information I use is out of the chip <coughs> rack, out of the chip rack, or not chip rack, but the um, gaming table, or things I've looked up uh, through online. But the 500 Nations is a very good website to find information. Okay? Uh, Big O Outpost, this is the Cherokee Catusa. This is up by Oklahoma City. Right, this is now where. No, it's outside Tulsa. Oh, Tulsa, you're right. So, we're sorry, yep. So, you still start off with the Big O Outpost. Then we go to Cherokee, where they put Cherokee, and then another version of their Cherokee chips. All right. Then it turned into the Hard Rock, and that's what the current Hard Rock. First edition, second edition, there's third edition, there's a. Within a couple of years, they were Hard Rock, they were swapping chips left and right. They had uh, one version that had the inlay and then you had the one that was all ceramic and I missed a couple of them so I know I'm missing a few out of the hard rock. I'm still actively trying to find them. I know they're out there, I know they're issues, we just nobody has them. Alright, so we're gonna go to another big old outpost, Cherokee, Roland. Again, they they all shared the same chips when they first came out. Also decided to share chips again. Those were the current house chips. They used a couple different versions as they went through. Um, and then for a short period of time, they put that bottom left-hand side set out. It was only like a couple years, and then they came out with this one. That's the current one on the bottom right. Hand. How many people are like uh, how many people are on the board of like the, the, the Cherokee Casino? Or how many? I mean, who owns it? I mean, how many people are? Does the Cherokee Indians really get something from it? Oh yeah, they own all of these. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They get all. They, they they take an ante for the table games, which is usually fifty cents, and that's what they pay to the state, and then they pay a certain tax on top of your revenue. But we end up paying the ante if you ever play it. Yeah. So sometimes they waive it. They will pay for it. But yeah, the Cherokee Nation, they own and operate all of these. And you see, it. every tribe owns and operates their own. How many? How many Cherokee casinos are there in Oklahoma? Right? Well, there's a lot. There's there's only three that, there's only one that has tables anymore. Well, the three that have tables anymore. But there's a lot of Cherokee just slot only. And I didn't put any of those up there. 
So there's a, if you go to the chip guide and look, you'll see all the different uh, slot machines, or the slot only. If you just you search just slot only. Just out of curiosity, did every slot casino in, in Oklahoma, do they have the tickets or some cash? No, they're all ticketed into now. Because the Hoopa one in California doesn't, it's a poor Indian reservation, doesn't have yeah, whatever you call it, tickets to go, it's still oh, cash. It's still cash. Only one I know, yeah, I'm yeah. just curious. About yeah, they're all ticketed into ticket outs, and you know, go, if you go and like, look at the chip guy, we've gone through and tried to get as many as we could uh, to add them so that we could add the casinos into the guy. Um, turkey, uh, salsa, salsa, salsa. yeah, salsa. Uh, no longer has chips, the only one's the issue. And then you have West Lone Springs, I was just there this year already. Again, multiple different versions throughout the year. So you've had to go on there probably five times over the years to get all of them. They've yeah, got different poker chips too, but they guard those bastards. Like Do they have different ones? Yeah, they used to have right. different poker room. And yeah. It was hard to get out of there. All right, Lucky Star Clinton. Those are the top versions, the first ones that came out, and the bottom versions are the current ones that they just recently changed a couple years ago. Uh, and then there's the Concho. These are all, both of these casinos are west of Oklahoma City. On, uh, was I-40 going out there? So, oh, so I'll give you an interesting thing about this trip right here. This one right here, I found, headed to the casino to go cash it in because I had an extra one. What makes it different is, You'll notice that this one doesn't have the TP on it, and this one does. As I had both of them in my hand to look and count how many I had, that's when I noticed the TP on the one right here. So that's the only reason why that one's on there is because I actually looked at it on the way to the casino to catch me. Just lucky. And with Oklahoma, you've got to be really, you've got to look at multiple chips up multiple times. Because you can look at one and say, okay, that's it, but it could be completely different. Okay, Ada. Ada is a uh, really small casino. Um, it's southeast of Oklahoma City. It's still operating. It's still using these chips. As far as I know, last time I was there, these were still the chips. It is two poker room or two blackjack tables in a glass case back in the corner. It's not very big, but it's yeah. When did they use it? Are 25 and 50 cent chips still in use? Yeah, those are anti. And what did they use them for? Antis. Okay. So when you buy into a hand, you buy $5, and they'll put a stack of 25 or 50 cent chips in front of you. And every time you play a hand, they'll take one off and put it in, it's like banking it. And that goes to the state, which goes back to their education fund. Actually, Oklahoma isn't, everything in Oklahoma is a, compact between the tribes and the state and we still actually don't have full class 30 gaming they cannot profit from a house back game so all of the profit that a casino would normally make from the roulette blackjack and craps has to go into promotional prizes so that's why it's a non-stop drawing for cars, $10,000. I play at the Hard Rock in Tulsa. Every single Friday and Saturday night, they'll be giving away between twenty dollars and $100,000 because it's all the profit off the games. So the only way they can make a profit is the anti-chip. So all of that anti-chip goes to the house. And then they pay a very small state compact, which is not very much at all. That's why, as Paul mentioned, all these casinos, the vast majority of them, don't offer table games because there's no money in it. But, but the casino is bank, banking the games, though, right? Well, but they have to keep track. So if they sell you $100 in chips and you lose 50 of it, that $50 has to go into promotions back to the public. They can't profit from it. So it's a crazy game. And there was an intermediate step to that they couldn't have balls and dice. So they made up, a, you walk in, there's a regular dice table, but there was like a card oh, shuffler I've machine. I've seen those, that yes. Had this dice, and it would flip out a six and a one. So there wasn't any actual dice, but it's the same thing they can't profit from. It. 
Same as California. So yeah, California. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I've it's been there since the opening. It's crazy gambling. So no true gambler will ever play roulette, craps, or blackjack at an Oklahoma casino. Because it's a five percent annual. Really? So, how, how many series. poker games would you say are guests? How many casinos have, have poker? That's that's a problem. Yeah, the Donald Street used to have them. They don't have a poker room anymore. You've got Tom Tom Durant. You got West Salem closed theirs. Well, they're it's got a lot less of than ten yeah. tournaments. Yeah. I would say less than. I can't do it, but I know it's there. It might even be less than five. There's only two in the whole Tulsa Metro, and then there's. Windstar, Star, River Wind, Grand City, yeah. and then down to so maybe five in the whole state. Yeah. I can name about the five poker rooms. Yeah. Okay. The Osage had one in Bartlesville and closed it. All right, we'll go back and continue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, again, Texoma, uh, same Chickasaw, using the same kind of, it's used the Buffalo chips, kind of use the same ones. Uh, and then you got Newcastle, Newcastle Gaming, and then it went to their Hat and Canes, and now they're back down to Icon, or back to Icons. Those just came out in the last couple years. Artesian, uh, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It is hard to get to, but um, they have beautiful chips, but they're not beautiful anymore, so. We had to get there a couple years ago because they are all really worn at this point. Uh, again, another Chickasaw, same thing, same manufacturer, Chipko, issued over with Buffalo, just put their name on it. Um, we got Goldsby, which I find interesting with all the Chickasaw Buffalo chips is some of them times you'll see a $2 chip, you'll see a $3 chip, and sometimes you won't see any of them which I feel and I almost believe that they all had them at maybe one time, but I got no proof. And I, I will continue to keep looking for them if they're out there. Gold Mountain, sticking to Chickasaw. Um, Riverwind, the big one. This, this is just, just outside of Oklahoma City. Norman, yeah, yeah, just a couple miles. Yeah, so south of it. So it's not massive, it's not, it's, but pretty big. I mean, we can't, when you compare it against Windstar and some of these other things, so. Uh, and this is their latest, the last uh, Riverstar uh, <coughs> terminal that's down on the uh, Texas border. Been down there. It reminds me of casinos in Iowa, little tiny thing out in the middle of the field. No real reason for it to be there other than. How many? Different tribes are there in Oklahoma? 20, I think it's 20 something. Yeah. It's maybe. listed on there. Oh, you did you not do one? Uh, 38? Yeah, there you go. But they all don't have casinos. They don't all have casinos. Were these a handout? Yeah, I thought you were a chance, but you can't. Okay, and then you got Salt Creek. Continuing, Chickasaw has a lot of casinos. Um, Treasure Valley. It's along the interstate, it's a good reason, halfway between uh, Oklahoma City and the Texas border. So. Again, Buffalo chips, they all these them at pretty much one time. All right, now we're getting uh, to Windstar. I'll just call this one Windstar. I found these two uh, no cash values on, I don't remember, I think it was eBay, the song. And so those are the earliest ones that I know, probably these for bingo. And, uh, other things like that, and then again, they continue to go. This is the latest uh, set they have, which just came out a couple years ago. You'll see the Chipco, you're not your bigger pulse in your hat and canes, but you'll see a lot of the other manufacturers, Icon, uh, Game On, are heavily uh, represented in Oklahoma. So, and Icon is just outside of uh, Kansas City, so it's not, it doesn't make not a big jump to see them down there. All right, now we're going to get to Choctaw. Choctaw also has a lot of them. I like these chips, very beautiful chips. Uh, the first set, you can look at them, but there's a slight color variation from every different version. They look the same, but when you put them next to each other, there's actually a color variation. I don't get into it. That was part of the collection I bought. They already had them, so 
go for it normally. I don't collect color variations, but these are pretty distinct. And then the latest version that they just came out with, um, down here is the game on version that they gave. All right, Choctaw Grand, which is probably the biggest for the Choctaw tribe. This is the big one. Stayed there, very noisy on a Friday, Saturday night, but a you know, lot of tables, a lot of tables at this casino. Um, used uh, RT plastics when they first started, chip codes, you see some game ons, and I found a lot of these variations as I went throughout the years by looking at the mint marks. And so I say you've got to look at the chips when you're going through Oklahoma's because they will reorder as Durant was building and getting bigger. They needed more chips because they opened more tables. So they did a reorder. But if Chipco International was gone and Game On was very similar, they just reordered it with the exact same with the style, but it has a different mint mark. And that's how I was able to find a few more variations going through it. I mean, just that's why you look at a lot of them look like I have the same chip. But. And finally, which I find interesting, is Choctaw started doing this. They got their own logo kind of chips. On, their, on the outside right here. And I'll get the nice Choctaw uh, logo. So they're going to a lot of it. You'll start seeing that they're moving all of those to that. All right, Grant, same thing. RNT Plastic, Chipco, Hatton Kings. This is the only, this was the first one that really changed chips lately. It was the first one to go and go with Hatton Kings, Clay. But you'll see a lot of them are going to clay got away from the, pot, or the, the ceramics. And you'll see I have the $100 and $500 chips from some of these casinos. I got these out of the R&T plastic uh, collection that was sold a couple years ago. Really nice man. Let me get into it before anybody else knew I loved Oklahoma. And I went through it and pulled everything I could possibly buy. So that's why I have it. All right, Choctaw McAllister. Okay, Choctaw McAllister is out literally in the middle of the north. I yeah. work there. He's right. It is, it is, I call it the hardest casino in Oklahoma to get to. And the reason why is these tables are only open up between 4 and like midnight on like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So if you're going to travel through Oklahoma to get chips, you're going to have to go on a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. You can't go Monday and Tuesday because half the tables will not be open. So, and you... And if you're going to try to time it, this casino could be open at 4 o'clock, and the next one you want to go to doesn't open up until, you know, isn't open or it's later in the day. So it's really hard, and we got to, when we do it, we do a schedule, and we have to kind of pick and choose which ones we will go to and which ones we won't go to just based on time, unless you're going to stay in the state for a couple of days. And they won't sell you chips at the cage. Well, no, and it, that picture is excellent, because even though it's another from Calistry, you'll notice that thought broke. Says Durant. Yes. I was there to harvest as well. And I just happened to look down and all the chips said Durant. Yes. Because of Durant's yeah. overrun yeah. before they got their own. Yeah, that's where I found them when I stopped there. Yeah. Um, this is for I picked them up and I was like, those are Durant chips. Because I knew them from we had just stayed at Durant the night before. And so I knew them and I was like, well they're using the and they're not because Durant had new ones and they were using old Durant chips. So that's why I tied them to McAllister because they were on the tables when it was open. And, and that, are we going to go to I like Pecola. It's probably one of my favorite on the east side. Really nice casino. Uh, and again, the same trend. Tribes seem to buy the same chips for all the casinos as they're going through. So our RG Plastic, Chipco, Game On, and, um, and now on to the uh, Clays. And you do have to look at them. Like, some of these are hard to tell the variation between them. But you look at these two uh, green ones here, they just say Choctaw Casino, and now it's Choctaw Hotel and Casino. So, like I said, when you're looking at chips from these casinos, you've got to pick up more than one and you've got to kind of go through them. Fire Lake, Shawnee, we moved out of into a new track. <coughs> these are up by Oklahoma City. Fire Lake Grand, don't consider they're not the same casino. They're in a different location. <coughs> a lot of chips, a lot of variations. So, and I'll give you, I'll explain this chip when I get to the Grand Casino, which is coming up. And then here's, again, these all go and these are all the ones I was able to get out of the one collection. All right, 
So Grand Casino is the weirdest casino in Oklahoma when it comes to chips because they have two, it's the only casino I know, and you said the other poker rooms, this is the only one I know has two different sets of chips. They have regular house chips you can play blackjack with, then they have chips in the poker room that are completely different. And it wasn't until a couple years that we actually that we realized that that was going on. So um, there'll be some like the uh, Fire Lake Grand ones that I don't have the 25. I'm probably missing it because I didn't realize that there was actually different chips on the tables. One in the poker room, one in the tables. And here's the new poker room ones that they just came out. And for the longer time, longest time, they were using old Fire Lake Grand. Uh, five dollars and twenty-five dollars mixed in with the one dollars that you see here. So it was like we got a partial order somewhere. All right, Comanche down uh, uh, Wichita, Wichita Falls, right down Lawton, down that way. Um, great chips. One of the only uh, Oklahoma casinos that actually carried a two fifty chip. There's not very many of them. Um, they actually had two different areas, a dark color and a, and a light blue. 1,000 is a pretty chip. Very pretty. I like that one. And then I, obviously, you'll notice I only collect the 25. Here's a really super hard chip. 25 center or 50 center. It's the only one that I know of. That one. Um, Gold River. And I will say that I am missing the one that is out there. I think there's only three known. Um, it also came out of the RNC plastic collection. I just, I saw it and I completely just didn't think it was Gold River from Oklahoma and just walked and just glanced over it. So it says Delaware Nation, Oklahoma. Right. Does that, which does that mean those the Indians came from, from Delaware or where going? Yeah, that's part of the Delaware tribe. Wow. Yeah. Again, still casino okay, part of Delaware. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm putting these all with the same tribe so you can see who owns what and where they are. And you can look those up on, on your little map. Yeah. See what about you know, Oklahoma we're talking about. Casino okay, no longer has chips, really short lived chip life on those. It's like maybe a year, and they were gone. And it's funny because there's another tribe, another casino literally across the street that does have tables. So one could compete, one can't. So. Just there, the Sugar Creek? We'll talk about Sugar Creek. Sugar Creek is the thing. All right, here's Border Town, Eastern Shawnee Tribe. This is up in Northeast Miami area. So, story is here's the chips. You'll see this one in here. You'll notice how this one's super colored. Got all different colors, right? It wasn't manufactured. This is how they were manufactured, right? These are the dobs from the bingo games. <laughs> the people were dobbing them to make them colorful. That's why this one's colorful. This one's got some color on it because they would have them while they were playing bingo and they were just dabbing them trying to make them pretty. So you'll see some of them that have it. There's not very many of them, but that's why that one's all pretty like that. This uh, Seneca $1 chip is the reason why I started collecting Oklahoma. We in the chip guide had classified the casino to be in Missouri. Well, my wife was from Missouri and I collected Minnesota, Missouri. So I was like, Seneca from Missouri. I'll get it. It's part of Missouri. Then we moved it to where it really should be, which is the casino is actually in Oklahoma. Right. It's literally on the I mean, you can walk to the border between the two. It's that close. It's right on the border. It's no longer open, so and it's still open, but it's no longer got casino because they built a new version. Which is the Patent Kings, really nice. Uh, Broken Bow. These are one of the few chips from Oklahoma that were mass sold. When, this, when they no longer use tables, they actually sold them up mass. There's hundreds and thousands of these somewhere. Mm -hmm. You'll see them every now and again popping up all over the place. All right, Fort Still Apache, the Apache Casino, and here's the new one that just we just found three weeks ago that were just released. Here's the, the interesting thing about these two. These look identical. Except one's a 39 millimeter, the other one's a 40 millimeter. And when we went to the poker room and they brought out a stack, I wanted to go through a rack of ones. And when they put the rack down in front of me so I could find new ones, I could instantly tell 
that there was different chips because it would, all the chips went like this because one was higher than the other. So again, you gotta you gotta look at what, everywhere for chips for that. The answer is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just looking from the top down, it's, it was easy to see them that they were much bigger. All right, Cimarron, another great looking chip out in the middle, small casino. It's uh, north of Oklahoma City. Been there, got harassed about taking a drink out of there, but it's all right. I had so many weirds, one of our stops, we took a, had a Coke, I went in to check to see if they had new tables, walked out the door, and the guard went us leave until we finished our service. So, <coughs> I understand it's right in city limits, so I can understand people going there to get a drink and then walking home or driving home, which you should do. Caw Nation, probably one of the prettiest sets of chips from Oklahoma, all, both versions. The Eagles and the Animal Set. I love this set. These were also sold. I've seen multiple, lots of these out there. But great set to have. Good HHR set. So love these chips. Okay, so South Wing. These are uh, Caw Nation. This is was it? <coughs> up in Miami. This is Miami here. I believe. Yeah, North yeah. Central by Enid or Ponca. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, no, okay, so this is now Rock and Brews. Yes. Okay, this is up going up I-35. 35. Yeah. So we're open. Rock and Brews gets their chips pretty soon. We expect them to get chips, so we expect Southwind is gone. They don't let call it Southwind anymore. They now call it Rock and Brews. So. Kickapoo, another great Chipco uh, chips. Good color, good graphics. And then again, uh, the Shawnees had another good set. Another good 25 or 250 chip, mm -hmm. one of very few, hard to find. Super hard to find nowadays. About 10 years ago, you could find maybe one around there, but now most of them are in collections or with the 250 collectors. Uh, Kiowa, Duval, all the way down at the Texas border. So the interesting thing about these chips, these chips have been on the table probably 20 years. If you go down there, they look like they hit the tables yesterday. They look brand new. And I, uh, John O'Ritten just went down there winning me because you're right, they all look still brand new. So I have no idea if they ordered like a million of them. <laughs> and they every week, they just swap them out so they don't get used. But every one of them look like the day that they came out of the printing machine. I don't know why. But yeah, I have not found a bad chip on the table here. Any denomination. All right, so this picture is when we stayed at Kiowa the night after we drove down. Um, if you'll notice the haystack smoke in there, you see the smoke coming off of there? Because mm -hmm. we were getting gas during a lightning storm, and that's where the thunderbolt hit <laughs> right across the street to start the haystack on fire. That was after we had to wait a half hour for our machines to turn back on because they lost power three times from the storm. And then we chased that storm across Oklahoma as we were going the other way. So yeah, I always keep this photo because it's not very often you see a lightning strike hit and he's that start on fire. There you go. All right, stables, Miami area, northeast on your map. Still, still going, there's just no tables. They can't compete with downstream. Okay, Creek Nation, now we're going to do, the Creek Nations have quite a few casinos. Tulsa, these two here, I don't think we're ever on the tables, the three and the four, and they were a part of the collection I got. So. Uh, River Spirit, big, big casino in Tulsa. Then <coughs> nice Marga, uh, Marga, 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 Creek Nation, Muskegee, Muskogee. Um, <laughs> well, hey, everybody missed, mispronounced my last name, so I could say everybody else. Um, really old CNB, CNM, CNB. You know, I've never seen one openly for sale, except for maybe the CNB one. I've never seen this one, this one, or this one. I just bought the second one on the top at this show. This one, CNM. Uh huh. Yes, yeah. it's very rare that you find them. I had never seen one before. Right. And I didn't see it. All right, and then you got Creek Nation, uh, good old RT plastics. 
pick up these out of that set. Uh, again, first editions are up here, second editions no longer has tables. Same with this one. They just had one full set, and that's it. Okay, Osage has multiple casinos, and I don't know if they can decide which one's gonna have tables and when they're gonna open up, but, um, or what they wanna put on them. You'll see the first set, great, we roll them together. Then we're gonna issue these, it says million dollars, and then we're gonna change our mind and we're gonna go to these. So I'm not sure, because this is all happening before I actually came down the phone, whether there's actually a five or a 25, that it says million dollars. I'll never know. And the only way I collected the Osage ones is I went to the Tulsa property, and they happen to have all the different versions on the table, so we went through all the tables and just picked out the different cities. So I only had to stop at one to collect Osage. Now you can't do that because they took them all to the table and there's only one. So hopefully we get a new casino in Barsville, and we'll get new chips. And Ponica City was a very short lived table time, maybe a year. It didn't last long. And Sand Springs did the same thing. We're going to issue these, and then we're going to issue these. Sorry, some of my photos are crooked. That's just the way I pulled them off my site. That's Kartuk. Use the same molds. And then Tulsa is the big one, and they've really expanded in the last couple of years. Hotel, everything else. When I went there, I think it was still a little tiny building. You walked up a ramp to get to. All right, Severn, Clans, Red Rock. This is the change that we found recently, and I can't remember, I think it was in the gaming table where we found this change. We originally had Seven Clans, Red Rock chips at the gas station that was in Red Rock, but I found documentation that says it was actually in the big O hall, which Paradise replaced. So these chips were in the same location, just that it was a bingo hall, and then when they renamed it Paradise, so that's and they also said that these chips were being played in the, in the poker room, when they had a poker room. That was before my time. So you could get both of them at the same time. These chips, you'll notice, they travel. These chips have been used at three different casinos with their several properties. properties. Okay, they started, first started in Perry. <coughs> then they moved to Paradise. Then they went to First Council, and now they're finally gone. Um, Perry was only less than a year for tables, and it was gone also. So then you see First Council, so what they had, then they took the chip codes out, they put in the Hat and Kings because they took the tables out of Paradise and they had all these great Hat and King chips that they didn't know what to do with. So they put them there, and now they're using these uh, game odds. This is what they're doing. So, great looking logos, great looking chips. I like these chips, probably the favorite ones I found this year. High winds, Miami area. You'll see that up in your corner. Why there's so many casinos up in Miami? Because that's the only land that they can put their casinos on. A small little area. Stone Wolf, the bane of many old <coughs> collectors. Um, very few chips got out. Very, very short time. I think I, the only reason why there is any of them out is because we got them when we stopped here again. Um, I only got maybe five or six of the five dollars and maybe 10 or 15 of the ones. So that's it, they're all in collections. So. Um, Buffalo Run, <coughs> found a new chip this year. They replaced that one. They do have a new $100 or $500 chip. So, we have no new 25s, so hopefully we'll get some new, new or lower denominations. Okay, Ponica City. Ponca Tribe, Ponca Game here, Ponca City. Um, great chips, I love these. These are another one of my favorites. Great design. This chip here, I, I have the notes on it. It was just, sometimes they call them doubler chips, or they were used for an anti chip. That's what my story was, is that they just didn't want to pay for it. Quack Quack. Like I said, when I was there when it closed. Multiple different versions. These are the ones that were on the table, the last version. Also great graphics. Downstream, which then pretty much took those tables out. Uh, luckily, I got the three and the four dollar chip or uh, out of the poker room before they killed the poker room. So I found those. I walked in there and I asked them, "Do you have different chips?" And they're like, "Yeah, let me buy a few." So we rescued those from 
the grinder. So great, this chip right here is now out for chip of the year for, uh, for the club. Hopefully it wins, it's a great design, great looking chip. So maybe it'll be the first chip for out of Oklahoma that will win chip of the year. So we'll find out tomorrow. Uh, Saxon Fox, Shawnee. Great chips. I'm mean, gonna kind of just I'm gonna go all the symbols used a variation of the same ones, so I'm just gonna kinda of go through a lot of the higher denominations I got out of the RT classes. A river mist. Okay, Seneca is up by Miami. Another great chip. Uh, good old uh, molds and it's really good, really good designs. This is now Grand, Grand Lake. And Grand Lake can't decide whether they want to have tables or not either. One year we'll, we'll have tables, one year they won't. Last time I was there they had a 25 or the 50 center, now they said it then they had the 25 center as they're handy. They go back and forth, so it's you never know what you find when you go through a pole. Gold Mesa, we talked about that one out in the middle of the panhandle. Uh, Tonkawa, another set of chips here that were actually sold um, in mass. So you'll see primaries and secondaries, great looking colors. And, and of course, as tradition goes, when it comes to them selling out chips, the secondary chips are always the better looking chips. I have no idea, but it's every time you find a secondary chip, it's always better inserts, better colors. And again, they did it here. Now, Taco OS is on the interstate, and that's the one that currently is on the table. Again, native lights, no longer has cables. And these are um, the chips they had. And they, again, they sold those on their racks off to the secondary market, too. So I was able to get sets of those all the way up to 500. The beautiful chips. And, they're, and you'll never find them for sale because the set collectors love them. The colors are awesome, the inserts are colored, the clays and their hats and things. So don't ever expect to see these come off the mats. I'll try and find something to get them to everybody. Sugar Creek, okay. Sugar Creek is way out in Hinton, Oklahoma. It is way, for a drive, it's like two hours from Oklahoma City, about. However, this casino cannot determine or decide what they want to do for their antique chip. Every time I've gone there, it is a different chip. And there's five of them. They've only had two different issues for one. So using the same five and 25, but they still have all of these different ones. This is the latest one that they finally came out with. So. Why not uh, Casino Riverbend? So using, this one is not on tables, but everything else is. And this is ordered for the poker room only. And it is almost near impossible to find. I have them all. You have them all. <laughs> So, as ordered for the poker room only, put them on one day. We looked at them, and I wrote the surveillance guy and said we didn't, because we didn't have these. So I went down and made them pull them all for the one dollar chip on them. So, you need to do that. Alright, favorite design, one of my favorite designs, chips here. Still hunting, actively looking for the 25. I will keep on it. I've actually made drive down there, knock on doors. See if anybody has one. This is one of the very few twenty-five dollar chips. Great design. Casino is still there, from what I know. It's just not being used. It was shut down. So this is a, even though this is, it's a United Pueblo Cabana Cherokee. It's not part of the main Cherokee tribe that you saw the other ones from. These are a different ones. That's a little star on your map. Um, they own a little tiny chunk, and it's actually <laughs> the other Cherokee casino that forced them to close. So because they said it wasn't on their tribal lands. But they're working, and I just saw a court case where it says that they're allowed to build. They can now um, trust the land that the casino is on into the tribe, and then they'll be <coughs> so. um, I know you like chips, but these are some special ones, some antique chips, some no cash value, some grand openings. They actually have plaques at downstream, some nice octagons that you'll find. Uh, a couple of like again, very few tokens, but this is one of them that I've been able to locate so far. I think tokens are less than ten throughout this entire. Show. Design all those off the bottom. These down here. Yeah. Yeah. They're great. Like an lion for uh, one of the Chinese New Year's. 
And the lucky turtle is a little tiny, slots only. You know, the, the turtle stop. Yep. Which is truck stop. Yep. Little tiny one. And then I was just say, so all these are all the people that helped me over the years. Um, Eddie Eastreet about his collection. Carl Schlott uh, about his collection. Tim Pierce is my buddy. He goes down there with me all the time. Um, Leo Dell, uh, who recently just passed away, I was able to pull a few out of his. Virgil Foss, he does a lot of research and helps us update the chip guide with dates when things open like that. And then obviously here's some starting to chip. You cannot. Without the chip guide, I don't. I would not be chipping. I, that's a that's a fact. It wasn't until I found the chip guide that I would actually see what's there. So without that, and still today, that's why a lot of collectors still collect. Um, sources, 500 Nations is a really good, uh, if you want to look when things are going to open, when things are, what's going on for any, not just Oklahoma, but for any tribal casinos across the country, even Canada, it's, it's not just the United States. The chip guide, the gaming table, where I was able to find some of these dates, these chips were issued, and that's where I got the dates from. And obviously the Oklahoma Indian Gaming Commission, I used them as a resource to get some of the back history on it. That's it. Any questions? Go ahead. Oh, also, if you are in attendance, please come up. I have found out of South Carolina, you tell me why, in South Carolina, the very first edition from the Bingo Outpost. This is one of the very first chips issued in Oklahoma. I found a rack of them. And you're more than welcome to have one for free. Oh, thank you. Guys come up. Thank you. So if you would like it's its brother or sister, the one dollar, they're on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Are they free too? Three dollars. <laughs> Normally I charge five, but since you showed up here, if you show me this chip, I'll give it to you. I may even give it to you for free. That's how I feel. <laughs> so again, very first one. I couldn't believe I found them. I, I, before I found these wraps, I only knew of uh, five. No, I had three of them. And I know where the other two So. It, it came out of nowhere, and I even asked the person who was on eBay where they got them from. They said they, it was in, in an estate sale. So, well, I can think of somebody that used to work for the casino, <laughs> moved out, and that's where they happened. All right, Jim. Uh, can I, how, how many casinos were there all together in Oklahoma? With chips? We have with chips. 73. Wow. Over the years. And that doesn't include the ones that name, changed names or merged or like that. So. Thank you, Paul. That was really a good seminar, very informative, and very really entertaining. Your pictures are great. Your scans are great. Thank you very much. If you want to ask any questions, come on up. I'll yeah, could you leave that? Oh. I wanted to write down 500 names. I'll give it to you. I'll give you. I know it's just 500 nations. I'd be 500 nations. I have it. It's bookmarked on my phone. I use.